and seven of this best of seven series between the best of seven series. Welcome to the best of seven podcast. Welcome to the Best of 7 Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Plant from Sense Talk. We are so excited and thrilled to bring to you our interview with Senators for Jace Howerluck. It's been an absolute pleasure and honor to be able to have him on the show. We've been in contact for about two to three weeks. We finally hammered down a date to do this interview. We got it done. Now you're watching it. I know it's been a little bit of time since the last episode of the Best of 7 Podcast, but I promise you, this episode is worth it. So enjoy. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, next week... Former Ottawa Sanders defenseman Igor Kravchuk will be joining the show. So lots of great content today and in the future. So stay tuned and enjoy this great interview. We are joined with Ottawa Sanders forward Jace Harrelluck. Jace, after a long time of talking back and forth, we finally got this done. Thank you so much for joining the show. Hey, no problem, Brad. And uh, I'm glad to be on uh, here and enjoy uh, you know, a night uh, chatting with you. Now, before we even get started, you mentioned to me you made yourself a nice batch of ribs uh, before this interview. Have you had a chance to taste them yet? Or are they still in the in the barbecue? How's that going? They're actually on the smoker right now. Um, ah. My girlfriend is the one who's uh, smoking them, which is pretty sweet. So, uh, yeah, she uh, she smoked some good ribs. We've had them before and uh, looking forward to them. So, uh, yeah, probably by the time we wrap this up, I'll be enjoying a nice supper. Well, my dad, uh, to bring up my father for a second, my father for his birthday got a smoker as well. There's nothing like uh, ribs or steak or anything coming out of a smoker. It's, it's next level. It's, it's a different experience. Now, you mentioned to me, as somebody with the name Brandon, I have to mention this. You said you're staying in Brandon. I think that's really cool. The Brandon Wheat Kings, what is the vibe there right now during this whole pandemic? What is it like, uh, you know, in the prairies right now? Because I'm in Ontario, so I'm wondering what it's like in the western part of Canada. Yeah, uh, when I first moved back, um, we were actually one of the, the few provinces and, and, and areas that weren't hit really, really too hard. And, um, you know, things were, uh, you know, they weren't too, uh, too crazy around here. And, and you're able to, to go out and do stuff still. And then we kind of had a wave about a month and a half ago, I want to say. And, and it picked up and then things tightened up here. And it's, it's mask everywhere and uh, a lot more uh, tighter restrictions and whatnot, which is... Uh, no good. They're trying to keep us safe, and uh, you know they're trying to uh, to, to stop this deadly uh, pandemic. And uh, and I think they've done a good job of it. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty uh, pretty strict and whatnot around here for the most part. And uh, there's still ways, uh, you know, to find a find ways to do things and yeah. uh, and whatnot. So I'm, uh, it's still good though. There'll certainly be a little bit of time before we get back to normalcy. But what I'm wondering is Bruce Garriott put an article out today stating that the Sanders would potentially have a longer training camp. Now, I want to get your thoughts on that because there was rumors earlier in, you know, this offseason before the round robin and stuff began that there would be a sort of preseason for the teams that didn't make the play in round. What are your initial thoughts about a longer training camp to get your legs going before the 2020-2021 season? Personally, uh, I wouldn't mind it at all. Um, I think uh, I think it's mostly up to the NHL and, and, and what works best with safety regulations. Um, you know, they don't uh, they don't want to risk anything too too much, and you know, and, and something you know go wrong, and, and you know. So I think they're going to follow how what the best protocol is, and I think that's what they're discussing right now at uh, you know the headquarters, and um, you know. Probably December or January, I want to say, will we'll be the start of the season. As for early preseason training camps and whatnot, I'm yeah, I couldn't really give you a hundred percent an answer. I'm okay with whatever they do. Um, I'm ready to get back at her. It's been a long summer uh, of training and whatnot, and uh, yeah, just ready to get back on the ice. Now I'm wondering, while we're on the topic of training camp, there's going to be a lot of competition moving into this training camp with a lot of great prospects moving up potentially from Belleville. You've got players like Alex Formanton, uh, Drake Batherson. Uh, you could go to Josh Norris, Logan Brown. There's a lot of players that are going to be competing for a lot of spots. And on top of that, there are a lot of spots available because not a lot of players are returning from last year's roster. There's going to be a lot of turnover. Uh, that's what happens when you have a young team. So I'm wondering, as first, we're going to get into this after your contract uh, negotiations or what's going on with that. We're going to get into that after. But I'm wondering, Jace, if you do re- resign, uh, you are an RFA, so if you do resign and come back to the Ottawa Senators organization, what are your expectations moving forward going into that training camp that's going to be incredibly um, you know, tough to line yourself up for a roster spot considering the competition there? Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm going to look to to continue to establish myself here in Ottawa. 
Um, I think I had a, a good stint while I was uh, with the team for, I think it was 11 games. Um, obviously joined uh, middle of February uh, while the season's kind of winding down. Um, and then obviously the pandemic hit, but uh, I think, I think my little stint there, um, I thought it went well. Um, we definitely have a young team. Yeah. Um, still a lot of great players as for prospects and whatnot. I didn't see a whole ton of them because obviously they weren't up there when I was there and, yeah. and I wasn't with the organization. So I, I can't really comment too much on that because I, I don't really know the, the organization too well yet because I, I'm fairly new to everyone and, and, you know, everything. So, uh, but for me personally, you know, my goal is just to ca- come into camp and uh, continue to play the style I play, work hard, earn my spot. Uh, nothing's given. Um, there's always guys trying to take your job in, in this league. Um, it's, you know, obviously one of the best leagues in the world. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, you always have to keep that in your mind and you know, go out there and play your game and, and yeah, just uh, leave it all out there. So it's kind of been my mindset my whole life and it's nothing's going to change now. So, uh, just because I played a little bit doesn't mean uh, I'm going to be there. So I'm going to go in there, work hard, uh, earn my spot, earn my ice time, and uh, you know, look forward to to trying to help with the squad. Well, when you were claimed off waivers from the Florida Panthers, uh, firstly, you were a 32nd overall draft pick by the Panthers in 2014. So when Ottawa selected you, I was like, this kid. Well, now you, now I now now knowing you, I firstly, you're a great person, but now seeing your stats and your history and your draft uh, capital. I thought that there would be a good chance that you make a good impression on a team that needs players that were b- written off by other organizations and like players like Duclair come to mind where they're getting a second chance and they're really taking a- advantage of that. So when you were, t- when you were claimed off waivers from the Florida Panthers and brought into the Sens organization, I believe you got a lot of minutes with Colin White and you had good, good chemistry with Colin White. I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah, we did. We had uh, we had great chemistry when we played together uh, alongside you know, there's a few other guys I had great chemistry with too. So um, there's a great young, great, great young team there. Um, they got a good core of, of young players in Ottawa. And, you know, whether it's playing with uh, Duclair, Tierney, Brown, White, whoever it is, they're all great players. So um, yeah, I enjoyed it and, uh, and you know, look forward to hopefully uh, some more games with them. Well, we're talking about Colin White. I think a lot of Sens fans know, and before Craig Medaglia left, the former Sens content producer, uh, Colin White was always in the conversation for Sens fans because he is, you know, the locker room. Like, I don't really know how to describe it, but, you know, every single locker room, every single group of friends has that one guy that everyone jokes about, but, like, everyone loves him like a brother or a sister or whatever. So that's the, that's the feeling Sens fans are getting about Colin White. So maybe you don't have to comment on it, but who is that guy that everyone loves but jokes around with in the locker room that keeps things light. Yeah, hundred um, percent. He he's that he's that guy. Um, he's a great guy. He's yeah. super funny. Um, you know, obviously guys like to joke around and mess with him, but he'll you know, give it right back. So it's great. Um, you know, he's got a great sense of humor, and uh, and you know keeps the room light. Um, he's that he's that guy in the room that's uh, you know great glue guy. You always need guys like that. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. And yeah. Now but I'm then, wondering. I'm wondering, as somebody, you know, you're young and, you know, like you and I, I think we'd be the same way where I've met a lot of people, you know, through like what I'm going, like what I'm doing right now with journalism and everything. And you've met a lot of people through hockey. So we don't have that social like anxiety issue, but, but I think there would be an element of social anxiety when you're going into a room full of grown men joining a team that you've never really met anyone. So what was that feeling like, you know, as a young professional, you're trying to get your career back on track to stay in the National Hockey League. It's one of the most, it's the toughest league in hockey to stay in because it's the top league. So what was that feeling like moving into the organization, moving into that locker room? And did anyone help you uh, during that process? Yeah, you're right there for sure. Whether it's a new job or or whatever it is, you're you're always going to go in there a little bit because you don't know anyone. Right. So um, yeah, I kind of felt that way going in. Um, you know, I knew I knew a few of the players on the team, uh, not personally too well, and, and just a couple personally. But uh, yeah, I went in there and uh, you know just tried to go in there and be myself. Um, you know, work hard for them, play hard. Um, and just the point we were at in the season, um, you know, just going out there and trying to help uh, win win every game I can, we can. So um, the guys that helped me, uh, you know, along the way, Shabby, obviously a guy I've known for a while. He's great, welcoming yeah. me. Um, but everyone was great. Uh, you know, everyone was super welcoming. Um, it was such an easy group to, to join. Um, and obviously a younger, younger group as well, but, uh, 
I enjoyed my time there for uh, for the time we had been there, and uh, you know, made a lot of you know really good friends, and look forward to getting back to camp and uh, uh, reuniting with them. Now, before we move on to other questions about your career and other you know topics, I'm wondering. Brady Kachuk is very, very active on social media. He is a clown on the, not like a bad clown, but like, you know, he's funny on the ice. He, you know, always making like, you know, funny chirps or, you know, he's, he's always, he's always somewhere, Brady Kachuk. This, this kid is a, in my opinion, a superstar already based off of the element of, you know, what he brings to the table, not on the ice, not even off the ice, just all over the place. He is just an incredible talent in a lot of aspects. What is Brady Kachuk like in the locker room? Cause I, I'm, you, I feel like Brady Kachuk's that, perfect player that you need especially on a team like Ottawa that doesn't win as many games as you'd like right now Brady Kachuk feels like that guy that would keep things light keep things moving and you know just pump the boys up yeah it's it's really impressive obviously he's a superstar like you like you had mentioned already but uh you know off the ice and, and in the room he he's a professional yeah. um and at a young age it's 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 tough sometimes right because uh you're young I mean you haven't seen a whole lot but obviously he's been around for a couple of years now and yeah, he just carries himself super well. You know, he always works super hard, doing the extra work, no, putting in the extra work, and, and he's a great teammate. Um, he was great to me while I was there and, and made me feel welcome. And, um, you know, he's a guy that you want in your locker room, and he's a guy that you want to go to war with. Uh, he's going to leave everything out there, and uh, he's got your back, obviously, uh, in any scenario. So, yeah, he's a, he's a hell of a guy, a hell of a player, and um, you know, sense are lucky to have him. We are certainly very blessed to have Brady Kachuk, uh, you know, through a lot of uh, the last few years have been pretty rough for Sens fans, but Brady Kachuk is definitely that glimmer of hope. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your career, uh, primarily with the Ottawa Sanders. In the last 11 games, uh, the, in the 11 games, pardon me, that you played with the Sanders organization, you got seven points, which is obviously very good. Now, I'm wondering what we already spoke with the player aspect of things, meeting the players, you know, interacting with the players. What was it like with the coaching staff, the new coach, DJ Smith? He seems like a really outspoken guy that will just keep it real with you. He's not, he's not going to mess around with you. He's going to keep it real with you and tell you what you need to improve. What was, it like, what was it like going from, you know, a bench in Florida, you know, with one of the top coaches of all time, to now a younger, very experienced bench where, you know, it's a different vibe, it's a different system. How did the coaches ease you into the system and how did the coaches ease you into the organization? They, they were great from day one. Uh, the day I got in, uh, you know, sat down with them, went over all the systems and how they play and how they like to play and, and what their ideal way is. So um, it was a very easy system to buy into, um, yeah. you know, people to learn. Obviously, it was, it was much different than Florida uh, and yeah. had to, you know, try and retrain some of that muscle memory to, to some areas. Mm-hmm. But uh, for the most part, it was a it was a seamless transition, and, and you know they made that uh, possible by all the help and all the coaching. And um, I had DJ actually when I was uh, younger playing for Team Canada. He was a assistant coach, and um, so I knew him a little bit there. But um, and I had Jack the year before when I was in Florida, and he was he was unbelievable. And he's you know one of the greatest yeah. guys and coaches I know. And uh, and I was thankful to to come into that, so I knew. Obviously, I was familiar a little bit, especially with Jack, and um, they were great. You know, yeah. they they told you exactly what they wanted, um, and they're you know, so their communication was so easy and on point. And you know, you just go out there, you work hard, you yeah. follow systems, and you know, things will take care of yourself. And um, and they they definitely preached that. And practices were hard, and and you know, you try and translate over to games, yeah. and uh, you know, you play that way, you get rewarded. So. You know, I felt uh, I felt that way there, and you know, I felt um, appreciated. You know, the way I the way I played and and whatnot, and he rewarded me with uh, lots of opportunity, obviously. And um, yeah. you know, that's what you need that is an opportunity, you know, to showcase yourself, and and that's how you get better. So, uh, very thankful for obviously, you know, the opportunity Ottawa gave me, and then you know, just how 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 great I was treated, and you know, how easy the transition was. Now, speaking of uh, the whole transition and the way that the organization has been able to, you know, keep your career going, and it's a very bright career. Your career ain't done anytime soon, in my opinion. I think you have a very good career uh, in the future in the National Hockey League. But if it wasn't for Pierre Dorian, which a lot of Sens fans have different opinions on, uh, if it wasn't for Pierre Dorian, you would not be here right now. We would not be speaking, and 
you know, you could potentially, who knows, you probably would have been picked up by somebody else, but we would not be speaking right now. So what is the relationship like with Pierre Dorian and what was it like the first time you met with him? It's great. Um, uh, he, we, we talked and, and obviously he obviously played me off waivers. So, but he, he just talked about, you know, a few things and you know, how he you know, had his eye on me a little bit before and whatnot. And, and he seen me play here and there, but, uh, you know, he was really happy to get me and I was really happy to join a young team and, you know, just try and, like you said, obviously continue my career and, and get better because, you know, at the point it's, you know, you go through ups and downs and, and your hiccups, and whatnot, like you said, with the player joining teams and whatnot. And obviously the fit just wasn't, wasn't going good for me in Florida. And, and, you know, to come to a new team and, and, you know, have someone believe in you and, and you know, take you and, and, and see, you know, the potential in you, it, it means a lot. And uh, he was great to me, super friendly, uh, super nice guy. And um, yeah, couldn't thank him enough for the opportunity and you know, look forward to just continuing to show him why he made the right choice. Now, while we're on the topic of Pierre Dorian um, and the strong relationship that you say you have with the general manager of the Ottawa Sanders, I think I have to bring this up. You are an RFA moving into the next season, and now you did have an impressive stint with the Sanders in 11 games, 7 points, and like we already spoke about, great chemistry with multiple players on the team, and you seem like uh, the advanced stats show that you are you know, a good fit to the scheme and organization. So in line with those contract negotiations, as an RFA uh, what is it looking like next year for you? Have you had negotiation talks with the Ottawa Sanders? What should we expect moving forward? Are you going to sign with the Sens? What's ha- what's happening? Yeah, obviously, being an RFA, you're restricted to that team. So, um, with uh, with COVID happening and you know the league shutting down, playoffs re- resuming, or whatnot, a lot of dates got pushed back um, for UFA and the draft and whatnot. So, uh, haven't been in any talks yet, but um, playoffs are still going on. Those dates are. Are set till after, so uh, wait till playoffs uh, is finished with, and then uh, I would love to be a senator uh, for the years to come. I mean, I love it in Ottawa, and, and I, you know, I see a lot of potential with the group we have, and, and you know, picking three and five and, and still building. Right, um, I see a ton of potential, and I'm young, and I want to be there for that. Obviously, my, my only goal is to win. That's always been my goal, no matter where I played. I just want to win. I find with you know, winning comes yeah. personal success. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'd love to be back there. Um, we're going to see what happens, see what happens at the end of the summer. Um, but, uh, yeah, I couldn't really tell you too much uh, else. But uh, just, yeah, I'd love to be back. So it's a wait-and-see approach. So what you're saying is you would love to be an Ottawa Senator, but we need to see what the, um, the contracts uh, negotiations are going to be like. Um, but like you said, you are an RFA, which means you are – very likely going to be returning to Ottawa unless you hold out. And we're, I'm obviously not going to uh, discuss that, but let's talk about the 2D rebrand. Cause you said you want to be a part of the Ottawa Senators organization for as long as you can. So yeah. that Jersey right here, that logo, the 2D is beautiful. How do you feel about getting to wear those sweet new threads next year? Yeah, I'm excited, man. Hey, uh, obviously like any other kid growing up, um, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a logo that sticks up when I used to play, I think it was like NHL 08 or, or whatnot. So, um, you know, it's, it's such a, such a vintage uh, logo with a ton of history. Uh, it's going to be very cool to wear it. Um, I think it looks awesome. Um, I, I'm excited and uh, yeah, I'm just can't wait for the season to get going. So uh, hopefully be able to wear it. Well, I'm wondering, you know, the logo is a retro logo. If you think about it, it is from the nineties. It is from the early two thousands, but you know, retro is in right now. If you look at all the trends, retro is in. So let's, Talk a little bit of retro stuff for a second. You got Hartford Whalers. I had Sean Burke, the former Whaler, uh, on the show recently. We had a whole discussion about, uh, you know, like the old logos and stuff. You got, you know, you can look at the old Boston Bruins logos. There's so many different logos in the league um, that should be returned. You know, the Quebec Nordiques, the Colorado Rockies. Let's talk about the non-existent teams anymore, like the Rockies, the Nordiques. What jersey have you always been a fan of or logo? Like, which one was always like a childhood like re- memory for you? Yeah, I want to say, uh, for me, it would probably have to be the Hartford Whalers. Um, Good choice. That's a cool logo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be probably the number one pick for me. Well, there's so many cool, cool older vintage logos uh, out there, but that's one that stands out, um, you know, uh, obviously a ton of history there too. Well, maybe uh, this is uh, 
considered a, a vintage jersey uh, logo now. So maybe in a few years we, we will be able to say that that will be our, our number one uh, logo for vintage options. Now, in 59 games in your draft year with the Brandon Wheat Kings, which by the way, out of the Ottawa, out of, besides the Ottawa 67s, is the only other CHL team that I like because my name is Brandon and the Wheat Kings got my full support. So in those 59 games you played with the Wheat Kings, Mark Stone's former team, by the way, you had 64 points. Walk me through that year and this the atmosphere and the, the overall the atmosphere playing in Brandon um, with the Wheat Kings. It was great. So uh, I grew up in a small town two hours north of Brandon. Um, so growing up, it was you know, the best hockey for 16 to 20 year olds that I could go watch within eight, eight hours. So I, I would watch a lot of Brandon weekend games growing up. Um, and obviously it was, for me, it was the NHL, I guess. So I grew up idolizing a lot of the guys that played here and then, you know, playing my minor hockey, you know, around Brandon and yeah. in different areas and whatnot. And it was just, you know, it was, it was a dream to be drafted there. Yeah. But that was the first step. And then after that, you know, obviously you put in the work uh, to, to make your dreams come true. And um, I was able to make it as a 16-year-old, which was super cool. We had a young, really young team at the time. Uh, they just finished <clears throat> They just finished uh, hosting the World Cup a couple of years soon. So we were, we were in a little bit of a rebuild, but we had a really, really good young core, I remember. And, um, you know, we had a ton of fun. Um, that first year wasn't, wasn't our greatest year, obviously. But it was a lot of fun still. Um, we had such a great group of guys, but that group of guys stayed together for the next three years, and we just continued to build that team chemistry and, and continue to, you know, build our own games. And, uh, you know, by year four, we were able to win a championship, which was super cool because a lot of those guys that were there yeah. when I first started were there too at the end. So um, it was it was awesome, man. I, I grew up playing in front of friends and family um, pretty much my whole junior career, which, you know, you, 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 can't, uh, you can't complain yeah. about you know, such a luxury. So, um, also lived in my aunties, uh, she was my billet. So it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty much, uh, the ultimate dream for, a for a 16 year old kid. So uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, lots of ups and downs, obviously like, uh, like anything, but, uh, I've, um, definitely look back and, uh, have some good memories and still stay in touch with a lot of guys on that team. And, uh, we look forward to seeing them again uh, one day for, a for a little championship reunion, but, um, it was awesome. I want to ask you something, you know, as a Canadian, I love, I love our weather here, you know, the winter, the, the warmness in the summer, it's, it's very, uh, there's very, di there's different variations to the weather we have anyways here in Ottawa. So I'm wondering, after years and years and years of being in Saskatchewan and playing with Brandon and being in Saskatchewan in general in the prairies of Canada, getting drafted by the Florida Panthers and then moving to Florida uh, to play games in the National Hockey League, which is obviously incredible to get to play games in the NHL. But you're also getting to do that in Florida, where it's like 30-something degrees. What was it like, instead of walking to the rink with like four jackets on, with your suit, and you're still freezing your ass off, what was it like being in Florida in shorts, just rolling up to the arena, a beautiful, huge arena, middle of uh, in Sunrise, Florida? Yeah, it, it took a little getting used to. Not yeah. gonna, um, it's, it's sweet, though, obviously. Um, you know, whenever you can show up to practice in shorts and, and, and flip flops and a t-shirt, uh, you know, that's, you gotta be pretty fortunate and, you know, um, you know, pretty thankful about that. So, um, yeah, it was cool. It was different. Um, you know, it was definitely, uh, some memories that you know, obviously have forever and whatnot, but, um, you know, as, as a player in the NHL and aspiring to be the best you can be, you're always looking to get better. And, um, being there, I'd been with the organization, and they've done so much for me. Obviously, starting my NHL career, couldn't thank. So we are back after a little bit of a technical delay. Uh, Brand, um, not Brandon, Jace, you were discussing about how the Panthers organization has helped you uh, when you started your career. So I'll let you uh, continue with that answer. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> they were the team that uh, took a chance on me and drafted me and, and made my dream come true of, of you know, being drafted to a team. And then along that, um, you know, they helped me get better throughout uh, my career. Um, I spent a couple of years in the minors there in Springfield uh, to grow my game and, and my confidence and, you know, just continue to get better because you're still young at that age. And, um, you know, they gave me my first shot at playing the NHL, which yeah. is obviously something you know, I'll never forget. And, and to, to be given that opportunity, you always want to make the most of it. And I think 
I think I, I did that fairly well. And, you know, I played, I played my hardest and, you know, tried to, tried to do all the little things right. And, you know, as a young player, you can be a little nervous coming into the yeah. league, uh, you know, about you're messing up or doing this because you, you can be sent down right away and who knows if you'll get called up again. Right. So you always have some of those thoughts running through your head, um, you know, as a young guy, when you're, when you're called up and, and you're so excited to play that first game and you don't want to screw it. You know what I mean? So all that, and, and, and what, you know, goes through your head and whatnot, but you know, just to be given that opportunity by, by, by an organization, you know, um, couldn't be more thankful and appreciative of that. So, um, you know, Obviously, my time is done in Florida, and, and it didn't work out okay. how yeah. you, know, you envisioned. It would sound like whatever. But, you know, couldn't be more thankful to be coming to, to a, a Canadian team in Ottawa. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just a lot different. The vibe's different. Um, you know, you, you got your true, your true fans, your, your blue-collar fans. You know, they show up every night just like you, man. And, uh, yeah. you, know, <clears throat> you know, they bleed red. And, uh, you know, they love the game. You know, Canada is hockey game. is hockey's game, in my opinion. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's pretty cool, man. Uh, you know, you grow up, I grew up in Canada. So obviously I grew up watching, you know, mostly Canadian teams on TV. So to be a part of Ottawa now and to have played there is, you know, it's another dream of mine uh, come true. And I'm just looking to continue that and, you know, continue to try and help the team grow and help the team get better. And, um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's where we're at. From that answer, I got three follow-up questions. I don't know where to start. I'll start with this one, I guess. You said from your childhood, you know, as a Canadian, of course, you watched a lot of hockey. Now, I'm sure a lot of those games were either, you know, the Western teams or Toronto and Montreal. I'm wondering, maybe I'm wrong, I'm wondering, did you get the opportunity to be able to watch and listen to any Sanders games growing up? Of course, yeah. I used to watch. I've I've watched a a few. I mean, obviously, it's – it's been a while since then, but I, I remember watching Al- Alfredson and Spezza, uh, and there's a few other, you know, even Bobby back, back when he was young, right? Um, yeah, uh, and now to play with him was, was crazy. So cool and, and, you know, something I'll never forget as well. But, um, yeah, obviously I grew up watching all those teams. They, they weren't my favorite team as a kid growing up. I was a, was a Chicago Blackhawk fan, actually. Um, but I guess my second would have been Vancouver because my – my brothers cheered for them, but um, yeah, growing up, I definitely caught a lot of the games, um, and so it's pretty cool to to be there and playing there now. You know, I find it really interesting that you brought up Chicago because that brings me to my second question. Because uh, you said you were a Chicago fan growing up. Now, I can't imagine how special this was in your first uh, your first and second career National Hockey League goals on December twenty third, twenty eighteen, occurred against your favorite childhood team, the Chicago Blackhawks. Walk me through the the wave of emotions that, 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 that you were going through during that moment, just that whole day, just walk me through it from night, from, from morning to end. Yeah, man, that's, uh, that was pretty insane. Um, I grew up uh, idolizing Patrick Kane, um, Jonathan Tays, the whole team they had. I could go down the list. Um, yeah, I watched their runs. I used to watch them as a kid, and that's kind of in those ages where, you know, you're 12, 11, you take it a little more serious than you are when you're a little younger than that. So, um, yeah, those are the prime years that I grew up, you know, watching them religiously and uh, following them. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I had that when I first got called up, obviously, um, you know, you, your goal is to stay there, right? You yes. don't want to get, you, you want to continue to play well and, and continue to get better and show the coaches stuff. So I remember when I first got called up, obviously I was so excited to, to just play, but I remember looking at the schedule, obviously, cause like anyone would. And I remember seeing that game, and, and obviously I was that. extremely motivated to every game to, to play as hard as I can. But, you know, just to have that game on the calendar and in being in Chicago was just uh, something I had highlighted and, and circled. And, um, you know, I wanted to make it there and not only make it there, I wanted to play in that game. So um, I remember you – certainly, You certainly played in that game, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, – yeah, I think where did we come in from the night before uh, – if you were if you were on auto at the time, I'd be able to answer that for you. But uh. anyways, we got in that night and mm-hmm. uh, we were on the bus, and it was late. Uh, it was late that night, and I had never been to Chicago actually. And I oh, okay. I just remember um, you know getting on the bus and it being dark and you know everyone's quiet, everyone's on their phone, listening to music, whatever. Mm-hmm. I just remember driving into the city and and, and you know, headphones on and whatnot, and just looking out the window and and just you know I've never been there and obviously grew up. Starts to hit. 
it was just it was just so surreal and, and, mm-hmm. and just such such a, a vivid memory that I'll, I'll always hold on to and um yeah i just remember pulling in and and you just felt like you're in the nhl i mean obviously still felt like you're in the nhl but pulling into chicago is just it's just an amazing city um yeah. there's so much history there it's just rich in history and and it's beautiful so i remember pulling into the hotel and just i was just kind of almost in shock just like oh this is just this is a dream it's every kid's dream so I remember it was my fifth game in, 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 and I remember getting to my room and I was with my, my roommate and whatnot, and we were just hanging out. And, and it was just the coolest thing in the world, just being there and, and you knowing I was playing Chicago the next day. And then obviously, yeah, showing up to, to the rink the next day. Um, you know, I just had I had the, the jitters all, all day. I was just so excited. I just wanted to play. I just wanted to play right in the morning. I just wanted to get going. <laughs> obviously, that doesn't happen. So yeah. the whole game day passes. And, and I honestly, I always nap on my game days. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't nap that day. I was trying and I was just, I was just everything running through your mind. You know, it's just so excited playing against Kane in Chicago. It was just so many emotions running through you. It was just Mm -hmm. too excited to shut it down for a little bit. But I remember getting to that game and I just remember, I I like to, I like to to spend a little time on the bench beforehand, before games and just kind of, you know, focus in and just, just kind of look around, appreciate, you know, where you are. And just take a deep breath and take it all in. It's just something I like to do. Everyone has their own little things they like to do. And I just remember getting onto the bench there and and, and just looking around and, and just like just couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was looking around the whole arena, Soaking it in. taking a look at all the names yeah. and everything, and just so many memories. I mean, I, I used to watch on TV all the time games. Yeah. Like that. So real. It was it was starting to hit it a little bit, and I was just so excited, so amped. Like, could, could, honestly, probably couldn't be more excited to play hockey game. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just remember going out there, and at the time, I was trying to earn my spot. I was I was trying to go out there and work as hard as I can, do the little things right, and, and I was trying to earn my spot. And that's something yeah. you have to do as a young guy. I was, a, I was a really young guy, and and I was I was there to take some guys' jobs, and then I was there to perform and do my best. And I just remember. Went into that game. I think I was on the I was on the fourth line, uh, and I was averaging six seven minutes a night. Not a whole lot, but I was still playing, right? So I just remember going to that game, and uh, yeah, I just it was the first first second shift. I uh, uh, I think yeah, the guy made a nice play up the boards, and I was just I was going for the puck, and I just okay. remember coming in the middle, and and I just knew I had a step on that guy, and I just kind of jabbed it by him and you know he kind of like always went to step and the puck was just sitting there and the goalie kind of made a little read and it was a 50 50 read and I just remember just saying like you gotta get to this club first and then when I did it was just kind of lights out ripped that puck in the net like and then after that it was just all a blur obviously and then and obviously scoring your first game in the NHL there it's just everything was a blur it's just full of emotions couldn't believe it um I think it was on December 23rd and everything was so cool. I think my my whole family was at my house with all my relatives and cousins and whatnot. Everyone was watching the game. So it was just such a special moment and, and one I'll never forget. And I'm sure they won't either. So um yeah, you couldn't uh, you couldn't have scripted it better, honestly, man. It's it was it was pretty crazy. Um I'm pretty fortunate and thankful uh to to be in that position and, and you know, to to have scored I guess twice in that game I ended up scoring. <clears throat> I ended up scoring in the second period rate right, for a shift. No. <laughs> and, and, uh, didn't get a whole lot of minutes. I can't like like hey, hey, Take advantage of like, your opportunities. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, <laughs> take advantage of your opportunities. And, and that's what I did. And, uh, and I just continued. And that was a game I, I, I thought I continued to build my game and help give me confidence and went off. But uh, yeah, that was, that was a night I'll never forget, man. It was, it was pretty, uh, pretty surreal. I'll keep it real, okay? You know, as somebody that's never going to play in the NHL, I will never be able to experience what you've been able to experience and what you've earned um, to experience. But, you know, you get all these answers from hockey players. You know what? God, God bless them. You know, it's just an honor to be in the league, blah, blah, blah. I think let's, let's – between you and I and I guess the fans, when you scored those two goals and you played in the, the Madhouse, the Loud House, whatever, Chicago, in front of 21,000 people against a team full of history, against Jonathan Tays, Captain Canada, or – you know, one of the captains, then you got uh, Patrick Kane. Was that the moment you're like, holy crap, I'm in the National Hockey League and this is legit and I'm I'm here, I've made it? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, it, it, it was. I mean, obviously playing in that first game too is... Yeah, pretty- yeah, of course. 
yeah, when, when, that game was definitely was a game where a lot of things kind of hit me and a lot of things kind of set in. It was like, okay, well, I just scored two goals against <laughs> the team growing up and I'm lining up to Patrick Kane on the next shot. It was pretty crazy uh, for a young kid growing up in a small town where, you know, everyone dreams to be whatever it is you want to be to achieve that dream and to get there. It's, it's a feeling you just really can't explain, man. It's, uh, yeah, it's for sure. super, super, super cool, dude. Um, and um, it's just something you just try and hold on to forever and uh, you know, look back on it one day when I've got little kids or grandkids and you know, kind of you know, tell them about it. And, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, not, but <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> something I'll have forever for sure. Dude. Hey, don't worry. YouTube hopefully will be around then. They'll be, if they don't believe you, just show them the phone and it'll be right there for you. <laughs> That's how we came out with uh, social media in 2020. Social, oh, social media is crazy, man. Like, this is the way I built my brand. So I can't really be saying anything. But, you know, it's, social media gives a lot of people opportunities. And that's for good and for bad. But anyways, let's talk a little bit about the fact that you've had so many, you've had, you have so many stories, like a lot of hockey players do. But in such a young career, you do have a rich career so far. So I'm wondering, let's talk about Florida where they got, they lost in the round robin. I assume you were cheering on your teammate, your former teammates. I don't see why you wouldn't. So what are your thoughts from uh, the Panthers losing to the Islanders and moving forward for the Panthers? I know you're a Sens guy now and you want to, you know, what's best for the Ottawa Sanders, but you still have friends, I'm sure, in the organization there, and you still would like to see them succeed. So what did you see um, happen in that series? In that series – um, yeah, Florida, Florida's a good team. They got a lot of good players, and yeah. uh, and they're they're going to be a hard team for years to come to play against. Um, taking nothing away from them, but they ran into to a team that just wanted it, man. They yeah. wanted. You watched that series. They wanted it. They 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 uh, they sacrifice pretty much every shift. Their bodies on the line. Whether it's blocking a shot, whether it's finishing your check, whether it's just you know playing simple. Uh, yeah. And you could tell in that series that Islanders wanted it. Um, they had that uh, that X factor that you need to win, and uh, it was pretty uh, pretty easy to see. Um, and obviously, they're a great team as well. Take nothing away from them. They've got a ton of skill. Um, they got Barzal, Bobillier, Nelson, Lee. They they got a whole core of guys that are yeah. are unreal players. And then on their back end, they got some great players. So uh, Kulak is he had an unbelievable playoffs, and Brandon Boy as well. A little shout out there, but he, he had a hell of a playoffs and um, yeah, take nothing away from the Islanders. They deserve to win that series, um, you know, and then t- to go and move on and, and beat Philly is, is pretty impressive as well because they're uh, they a hell of a team as well. So, uh, you know, props to Islanders for, for taking that series. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a good series, but I just thought the Islanders wanted it more and, um, and it showed and, and then the results showed. Stars or Tampa, who wins? <laughs> I mean you know, sorry I want, to put you on the spot there man who I want to win or who wins both just put it all to one if, if that makes sense like yeah um uh, personally I want Tampa to win I just I, I got some buddies on that team that are yeah, that makes sense. Me. so uh I grew up playing against point for four years really ago. we went toe-to-toe for four years we both wow okay he was he was Played Musha, we played each other eight to ten times a year, I think. Played him in playoffs, beat him out of playoffs twice in our in our there you go. years. So we have so much history with with each other, and and we've played to, with each other, and I just got so much respect for him. And obviously, what he's doing is is insane. He's unreal so player in the playoffs, and and you know it doesn't really surprise me. Um, and I'm sure a lot of guys would say that that grew up playing against him that were in the Western League too. He's just always been so dominant. He's he thinks the game at a different speed. He plays the game at a different speed, and he's just able to put everything together. So to be that size and to, to be able to play the way he does is just uh, it's remarkable. So I, I'm really rooting for him. I, I would love to see him win a cup, man. I'd be awesome. But yeah. uh, realistically, they're gonna they're in for a tough haul. Um, yeah, I think so. Else is not backing down. They're a big team. They play hard. They're skilled. It's it's going to be a great series. I'm really excited for the game tonight. Yeah, um, but it's going to be a great series. But uh, I think Tampa's going to take it, dude. I think they're down one, but I just I think they're going to take it. I'm rooting for my boy. Yeah, um, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Either way, it's going to be it's going to be one hell of a series. That's for sure. 
Now, I I, I want the Dallas Stars to win because uh, Rick Bonus is the former Ottawa Sanders head coach. I do think Tampa will win in seven. Now, Braden Point. I'm not going to leave this this little uh, you know interview before I I you know we have another little bit to go, but. You mentioned Braden Point. He's essentially a top 10 player in the world right now. So I got to ask, are you still in contact with him? You guys still talk? Or uh... I got Braden's number and, and Sabin went on and I sent him the, the, a message here and there and congratulating him. He's, he's an awesome guy. He's a down-to-earth guy, uh, easy to keep in contact with. But he, he's playing for the, for the biggest trophy in the world right now. So yeah. I'm just give him the space and let him do his thing and – you know, I'm sure he's got a lot of people, whatever, messaging, whatever, but I'm going to let him do his thing, let him, let him dial it sure. in here and you know, hopefully he can bring it home. And then I'll be able to, should, be able to you know, send him a congratulatory text. Yeah. And hopefully that's the case and, and we're not. But, yeah, we stay in contact here and there. And when I play him and see him and I'm on the road and whatnot, and, yeah. The fifth overtime game where Braden Point ended it. Um, were you awake for that whole thing? And if you were, did you shoot him a message right away? Yeah. I was awake actually for that. I remember. <laughs> um, he's just, it's just, it was funny because it's playing against a guy uh, like that your whole life. I've seen pretty much everything he's done uh, up until this point. So to see that goal in was just kind of had a little bit of flashbacks. I remember him scoring a few goals like that, but he just got that wiry little shot. He'll just shoot from anywhere and find holes. And it was pretty cool, obviously, uh, yeah. to see him win it and the Patton and Sally and, yeah, it was awesome at that. I must have sent him a text that night for sure. Um, but yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Um, super happy for the guy, man. He's he's earned it. Um, he he's he's a player, dude. He's he's an absolute. Player. Now I'm gonna ask you probably a few more questions before we wrap things up. Firstly, you know the players right now. The the NHL's done a great job with building that arena and making it look really really cool. You know it's. It basically has the vibe of a winter classic game, but there's cool effects around. As a player, though, it's a little different because you're playing and you're using the energy from the crowd to pump yourself up. So, well, obviously you're not there right now. Uh, what have you heard from players that are in the bubble or were in the bubble? Or if you haven't heard from players in the bubble, what do you think the experience is like? Um, yeah, I, I think personally, uh, playing there, it would be different, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, we play this game obviously because we love it, but the fans are, are you know, a huge part of it, man. Yeah. Uh, if it weren't for the fans, we wouldn't be able to play this game for them. So yeah. um, to, to not have them there obviously is a huge bummer, but I think the NHL has done an unbelievable job with, um, you know, compromising, you know, the situation and making the best out of it. And um, and I think, I remember I was with Sandheim the other day, we were, we were golfing, he's a good buddy, and, Mind we train together. He's <clears throat> from Brandon, and yep. obviously we're chatting a whole bunch, and he had a bunch of stories and whatnot for me. And and, and kind of the main thing I took for it, it's a grind. I think people don't realize, you know, these guys are locked inside a hotel, yeah. and and I mean, obviously you're with your your teammates and whatnot, but you're going to war every day. I mean, everyone, you know, they're they're <clears throat> they're, they're laying their 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 bodies down, sacrificing their bodies to to try and win a yeah. Stanley Cup and um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a hard road. Um, I think I remember him referring to it as going to war, but it, <laughs> yeah, it, well. it is what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, he, guys are going out there and they're just playing so hard and it's such obviously high level hockey and, and crushing it. It's just crazy. man. Yeah. So it's, uh, it would be obviously really cool to be there. Um, but uh, you know, props off to those guys for, uh, for you know everything they're doing right now, um, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Now you mentioned it to me when we were texting uh, last weekend, and now you just mentioned it again with Travis Sanheim. I assume you're talking with Travis Sanheim. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So your golf tournament, uh, how did you how did it go? Did you uh, you come out on top, or were you uh, just there uh, for the bruise and uh, some fun? Yeah. Well, my tournament's actually this weekend. Oh, it's okay. A, okay. It's a smaller tournament, but I did play him last weekend. <laughs> I did come out on top. Um, there you go. <laughs> well it's a nice welcome back for for sanny um we enjoyed it we had a good time and we always have a good time um you know just shooting the shit and you know yeah. and playing some golf um but yeah he came up came out on top but tomorrow tomorrow we're actually playing each other me him and uh ryan pulak and another buddy here tanner casper who is with the uh, st louis organization um we're all going out for a nice round of golf tomorrow so we'll, we'll see what happens on the course i know he's looking for a little bit of revenge um <laughs> And he gets some of his money back. 
know if that's going to happen, um, but uh, I'll let him try. <laughs> well, you keep you keep us posted on that. Now, well, we're on, we're on the conversation of money and stuff. Fantasy football is here. Football is here in general. Have you watched any football lately? Yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, I love football. I enjoy watching it. Um, it's something you know, fun to do on a Sunday with your with yeah. your back, your back watching football, play some bets. Obviously, who's your uh, who's your team? I'm a Packer fan. So yeah, Packer fan. I grew up. My dad's a Packer fan. So. Just rolling with the family, and uh, yeah, I love the Packers. Grew up watching Brett Favre, uh, so yeah, definitely a Packer fan. But um, yeah, it's enjoy watching football. Well, weather, whatever I'm, a, I'm a 49ers fan. I, I do have to ask, how did you enjoy that uh, championship game last year? Uh, NFC Championship game, Packers versus Niners. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't love. I didn't love it, but no, it was a good game. Um, they got their number. We'll see what happens next time. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to be a jackass there. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to flex on you. You guys deserve to win. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens next time. Well, the Niners are full of injuries right now, but this is a this is a hockey conversation. So let's steer back to hockey. You played in the IIHF World Junior Championship with Canada. You touched up on that earlier, but this was in 2014. You got a bronze medal. You know, before we wrap things up, I got to talk about it. What was it like playing for your country, representing your country, and winning a bronze medal? for your country um yeah it's it's pretty incredible to play for your country man I actually was uh that well I guess the year they won bronze or they didn't even win bronze hey we didn't well no. chief editor Noah Luden uh, you're no. giving me some fake uh, fake news on this on this sheet so no, that's no, a little I, embarrassing <laughs> no it's, it's not embarrassing it's fine uh, uh so what, <laughs> messing around messing around team. So, so actually, I, I played, I played two different team Canada's. I played when I was in the under seventeen, and then I played the eighteen World Championships, and we actually won gold in Hive and Alinka. And oh. that was that was uh, like it was another experience you never forget. Playing for your for your country is 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 amazing, man. It's it's something every kid dreams of. You, you know, you, Boxing Day rolls around, everyone's right around the TV. You know, playing road hockey that day, just can't wait to watch. Team Canada play their first game so I, I grew up like that uh and, and I grew up idolizing and watching all these guys play and, and it was just the coolest thing so to be able to play for the under 17s under under 18s was was yeah. awesome it was a dream come true um win a gold medal with it with the team and, and you know so and you look back on the photo and it's just so many uh, yeah. guys and players uh that are continue to, to grow their careers but I actually back to the world junior championships it was my 19 year old year and I, uh, yeah, I was, I was hoping to make that world junior team. Um, I had a, had a good year the year before and you know, the year was going really good in Brandon, uh, had a strong start. And then I had went to, um, Calgary and yeah, it was Calgary, Toronto, it's Toronto actually. Okay. And <laughs> had, um, we had the training camp there okay. and I was, I was, I was a little banged up before, so I wasn't able to, too bad in the first whatever but then i played the next two games and okay. uh, the exhibitions went well and then they brought me along for the it was like the second final cuts to finland so i, I flew all the way to finland with the with the team and wow. uh it was really cool obviously to go over there with the squad and, and you get treated like gold with hockey canada always they're amazing um uh, and uh, they treat their players phenomenally so that was really cool the whole experience going over there and whatnot but then Played a couple, I think it was one or two exhibitions there. And then they had to cut down to the final roster. So uh, I think it was me, Nick Merkley, and uh, Everett defenseman, Jules and Noel Jules, and I believe. Uh, we we got the snaps, there's three of us. And yeah, it was Christmas Day. Uh, was, oh, man, oh, yeah. are you serious? They cut you on Christmas Day? Oh, my worst Christmas, they, yeah. They, they couldn't wait a day? No, man, they cut oh. pretty ruthless, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got cut. Uh, Real life Grinch. Yeah, I got told by my 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 head coach and GM and Brandon was actually the assistant coach that year, so they let me know, and that's kind of obviously a shitty feeling because yeah. you, know, you work so hard and, and you're so close. Like you're literally there. You're, you're a day from playing the opening day of the tournament, and and yeah, you you get cut. So um, you know, it's something I've you know obviously was it sucked, man, but it's yeah. adversity and something I had to go through and. Ended up going back and uh, you know winning, winning a championship that year in Brandon and uh, and having 
my best season ever as a player. So I use that as a little bit of motivation just to show them. And I think they ended up winning fifth or sixth that year. So they didn't have a great year anyways. And I mean, obviously I'm always cheering for Canada no matter what, but when you're that close to making a team and they don't do well, it's, you know, it's, you know, I, uh, yeah, it, it was bittersweet, dude. Uh, 16 hours on a plane home. <laughs> yeah, but hey, you're in the NHL now, man. You're in the NHL. You've made it. To have that opportunity to be there was yeah. Do, so, uh, yeah, a memory I'll never forget. But uh, yeah, it would be cool to play. And, well, and what I believe, you know, I don't want to get all spiritual, but you know, I believe there's a plan. God has a plan, and you know, there, everything happens for a reason, right? So, well, you know that that is a really shitty thing that happened. You're in the yeah. NHL now, man. So, yeah. things happen. They and things have worked out. So, exactly. just look at back, look back at it. You know, as a, a like a, a crappy memory, but still a funny memory if that makes sense now no, i don't want to you got to turn a negative into positive whenever you can and uh you're completely right there and that's something i you know that's, about for a couple of days but you move on man and it's life yeah that's that's the way i live my life you yeah. you life's too short to dread on stuff so you hit the nail on the head right there you gotta you gotta just make any even the worst of things you gotta turn into a positive or else you life's gonna be really crappy for you you know yeah, yeah, hundred percent, dude. I, I completely agree. You, you always try to have that positive outlook, uh, no matter the situation, and um, that's something that I try to be like. Now, before I uh, let you go, a uh, couple things. Firstly, do you have a message to Ottawa Sanders fans before um, the season begins? Yeah, I'd just like to thank uh, everyone for welcoming me. You know, all the kind messages don't go unnoticed. Um, the media was great to me. Um, everyone supported me. Um, like I said. Uh, I enjoyed my time there as short as it was, I guess it was a month and a half. Really enjoyed it. The city was super cool. Um, I'm excited to get back and see more and, and do more. Um, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to, you know, hopefully uh, come December, uh, you're going to see me back there and playing and in front of you guys. And um, we just can't wait to get back at it, man. It, uh, I appreciate you having me on here and of taking time out of your day and, and uh, hoping. Uh, yeah. Where can people follow you on uh the social medias. I know that's important these days. So where, yeah. can, where can they saw you follow? Yeah, just add Jace Howerluck is, is my handles for my Insta and my Twitter. It's pretty much all I have. There you go. I'll let you get to your ribs, man. Thank you so much for joining the show. Uh, we've, we've been waiting a long time to do this, and I'm so happy we got it. You know, two clips of this interview. We had technical difficulties, but it was a great time. Uh, Jace, thank you so much for joining the show, and I look forward to you scoring goals left, right, and center with Ottawa Sanders. Thanks, man. Hey, Brad. I appreciate it, man. You take care. You too, man. Stay safe. That was our interview with Senators forward Jace Howerluck. It was absolutely so much fun to do. Uh, Jace is a great guy, very well spoken. Uh, and with the Ottawa Senators, seven points in 11 games. Hopefully, Jace will be playing in the nation's capital for many more years to come. Thank you so much, Jace, for joining the show. And hopefully, very soon, you can join once again. Now, before y'all go, I have a couple updates. Firstly, like I mentioned in the beginning, Igor Kravchuk, former Senators defenseman, will be joining the show next week. So stay tuned for that. Lots of great content coming your way. But before we go please follow us on twitter instagram and facebook at since Hawk podcast we uh, upload our video links and podcast episodes there clips from the episodes and we interact with you all so be sure to follow us there as well follow my personal twitter account at sense underscore i tweet a lot and i mean a lot uh it's a great follow people tell me and uh if you follow me i'd really appreciate the support and i'm very act- interactive there so if you wanted to talk to debate whatever uh, just hit me up there and i'll very likely respond as well our five streaming platforms yes ladies and gentlemen that is five streaming platforms that's on spotify google play apple Podcasts, soundcloud and of course here on youtube click the big red button down there and subscribe to us click the notification bell and put notifications on so you get notified whenever sense talk uploads a video but besides that thank you for watching it was so much fun to do this interview with jace howerluck and stay tuned for next week when former senators defenseman igor kravchuk joins this show so besides that thank you all for watching and listening stay safe and we will see you next week